How are you folks? I'm George Lanyotis, the executive chef of the Chestnut Chateau restaurant right here in Union. And I'm gonna be making something really, really special for you today. It's late July, it's super hot out, it's extremely hot in this kitchen, but we're gonna get through this. We're gonna have a good time. I'm gonna make a beautiful display of a tile fish. We're gonna make a nice walnut crust on it. We're gonna make a, a spicy mango sauce and we're gonna cover it with some white rice. This is gonna be absolutely fabulous. We got a lot to do. This sauce that we're gonna make is gonna consist of brown sugar, brown sugar, white sugar, herb spices, some acidity. We're gonna get started right away because that's gonna take a little bit of time to do. So, we have our pot. It's gonna require, now look, I'm gonna make enough sauce for, for my restaurant, which I'm gonna need making for about 30 plates. So right now, this recipe, it's gotta be cut by a lot in order to make it for two people. So we're gonna make it for a lot just to, uh, so I can cover myself for this, uh, the next couple of days for me. So here we go. We have our butter. We're gonna melt that down. We have our brown sugar. We have the zest from a lime. We have an orange and also another lime which we're gonna be adding. Now we have our butter, we're gonna sit there. We're also gonna be making a walnut crust. This crust is gonna consist of chopped walnuts, some butter, some panko, some parsley, and some shallot. It's gonna be absolutely fabulous. So while our butter is melting, which we could start it right away, we'll throw in our zest. We have our white sugar, our brown sugar. I'm gonna start that off nice, perfect. We are looking good right now. And to this sauce, we're gonna be adding mango nectar. We're also gonna be adding some orange juice and a little bit of cornstarch just to thicken it up at the end. Now, we don't wanna give the sugar any color because we're already using brown sugar. It's just a sweetener. So, just take it from there. That looks really, really beautiful. Uh, looking sharp. We're looking sharp right now. We're going to add a little bit of garlic. We don't need a lot. We're not going for savor right now. We're going for sweet. We have our mango nectar. We're looking at about, I would say, five or six cups. We're going to be adding our orange juice. And now a very important part, the lemon, you're just going to throw in there, and the lime, just the way it is and then we're gonna straighten that out at the end. The next thing we're gonna start doing, we're gonna start basing, making our crust. Now this crust, we're gonna fillet this fish, we're gonna sear it on each side, and then we're gonna put a crust on one side and then finish it in the oven. So you're not gonna sear it with the crust, so you got a lot of time, you could do, you could do a lot with this. We have, I would say about a pound of love. We have our walnuts and a pan some panko breadcrumb. Our parsley and a shallot. Season it with some salt and pepper. So now what we're gonna do is this. We got all our ingredients in for our crust. We have our butter, our parsley. We have our walnuts. We have some panko breadcrumb. We're gonna put some gloves. You can use a spoon. I was thinking about using a spoon. We're gonna use some gloves. It's a lot faster, it's a lot easier. And you know what? You're playing with your food, it's fun. Who doesn't like playing with your food? Be a little kid about it, enjoy it. So, we have our butter, which is nice and soft. Actually, the French use the term and pomade. P-O-M-A-D-E, I believe it is, and pomade, which means soft butter. They have a word for it, one word, which, whatever, it works out for them. The French are actually, they say that all oh, the, the best cuisine originated from the French. How true that is, it depends. I don't know, I'm Greek. I love the Mediterranean cuisine. Either way. So now we have our crust, which is nicely incorporated. You want it nice and hot, you want it packed in. We're not gonna use all that. We're gonna use actually very little of it. So that is all finished. We have that. We're, now we're gonna start off with some rice. So we can take off our glove again. We can slide this over. We're gonna make a simple white rice. How do you make a white rice? Very simple. You are gonna take one part rice to two parts liquid. You could either use chicken stock like I'm using, or you could use uh, a water and add some salt to it. What we're gonna do is very, very, very simple. We have our pan. We are going to take a little bit of butter. 
very little. About that much. We have shallot, a little bit of fresh thyme. And you add your cup of rice. Now we don't need a lot, I'm only making two plates. So now what you want to do is you want to incorporate that rice and you want to get all that fat from the butter around the rice so it's not really clumpy and sticky at the end. It makes a big, big, big difference. So we're going to work that rice around. We had one cup of rice. We have two cups of stock. Like so, we have our bay leaf in there, which is right here. And one sprig of thyme. So we're gonna let that cook. That's gonna probably take about 15 minutes. Our mango sauce right now is looking perfect. That's exactly where we want it to go. We have our red pepper flake, which is gonna add the little kick. Triple pinch. It's gonna look great. We're gonna let this cook down for about seven or eight minutes. We're gonna let that rice cook down. When we get back, I'm gonna show you how to fillet a tile fish. I will show you when, when you're purchasing a fish, what exactly to look for in purchasing a fresh fish. So guys, don't leave that seat. You don't wanna miss this next segment. We'll be right back to watch Cooking with George. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please. Don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Cooking with George. I have my cousin George, yes, I am executive chef George Nyotis. This is cousin George, Cusotis. Either way, he blessed us with a with a work of art, a golden tilefish that was pulled out of the Hudson Canyon. Cousin George, tell us a little bit of something about this fish. This fish is native to the Hudson Canyon. It swims in depths between 500 and 1200 feet. It has an exclusive diet of shellfish and squid. That is correct. Now, really quick, you eat a lot of fish, you fish a lot. Now, say you were to go to the supermarket, George, and you wanted to purchase a nice fresh fish. What would be the things that you were looking for? The first thing we look at are the eyes. Yes. You want to make sure they are nice white and clear, just like a normal person's eyes would be. You look the fish in the eye, and you can tell if it's fresh. The second thing is you want to look at it and make sure that the skin is very, very tough. If it's firm soft skin or, or firm. Mm -hmm. And you also just want to smell it. You can always tell a fish by its smell. Yep, sure. And also another way you could tell is you look at the gills. If they're a nice, nice red, vibrant red color, that means the fish is super fresh. The longer that fish stays out of the water, the fish are gonna, the, the, the gills are actually gonna turn a paler pink uh, to white color the longer it stays out of the water. Now, if you notice the tile fish, there's two species of tile fish. Uh, we have the blue line tile, and this is what we call the golden tile. If you notice the beautiful gold marks along the side of the back. The, the tile fish's eyes, because they are found at such depths that are so deep, there's hardly any light up there. I mean, this fish saw the light of day for the first time today, and he's in our, he, he's in our restaurant. It's a beautiful thing. His eyes are really, really big because it's very, very dark at the depths of 800 to 1200 feet where they, are, where they usually live. So you need a bigger eye to see. Now, I'm gonna show our guest and my cousin how to fillet a fish properly. The first thing we would do, we would flip it to the side. We have a nice sharp knife. And what do we say on every episode? Dull knife, dull chef, guys. Keep your knife sharp, okay? Like that. We'll wipe the blade down a little. So, now we will start. First incision is going from the dorsal fin all the way down to the bottom, just like that. You would flip it around, and you would do the same on that side, okay? Now, you would flip this. It's easier for me to do it this way. 
If you could catch this, we'll move this out of the way so we can grab it on that camera. Just like that. And this fish is really, really, really dense. It's firm. It goes to show you how fresh it really is. Just like that. Now when you're filleting your fish, you should be losing probably 50% of it. If you know how to, if you know how to fillet fish properly, you're losing 45 to 50% of it, which means 45 to 50% is waste, or almost 55%. But if you know what you're doing, you're gonna lose less. You're gonna try to lose as less as possible because again, being in the business, you don't want any waste. And that is a beautiful golden tilefish fillet. That is one side. Now we're gonna flip the fish over, okay? And we're gonna grab it like this. What beautiful colors. You see that gold color? Excellent work, George. Excellent work. My cousin George blesses us with some beautiful, beautiful fish throughout the year. He's an avid fisherman, he's a great fisherman until I'm on the boat with him. And then he becomes number two, just like that. Okay. Now we're gonna take this, we're gonna just pull the belly apart. And that's it. We have two beautiful fillets. Now this carcass, we could actually save it and make a beautiful, beautiful stock, but not necessary right now because we have some nice meat that we're gonna be taking care of. So now, we have a beautiful fish, we have the nice filet. We are actually gonna skin it, like so. And what I like to do is I like to hold it with my left hand and shake the skin, and you move the, the knife with your other hand. Just like that. That looks perfect. And now with the tile fish actually has pin bones going all the way down the side. It's actually very, very rare for a, a species of fish to have that pin bone all the way down. And tile fish, uh, actually mako shark also has it, and so does swordfish. I don't know if you, uh, you knew that, cuz, but now we have, that'll be one portion, that'll be two portions. Now we're gonna take this, just like that. And now we have three portions that are totally deboned and filleted. So, we have also our skillet. We're gonna slide this, how's our rice doing? Oh, our rice looks great. It's nice and dry, so we're gonna set this aside. We have our non-stick pan, which we're heating up right now. Our sauce is just about ready. With our sauce, we're gonna be just adding a little bit of chicken stock. Actually, Cousin George, I appreciate you being on the show. I appreciate you donating this beautiful tile fish. Happy to catch it. Yeah, you're happy to catch it. I'm happy to, I'm gonna be happy to feed you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So while Cousin George is making his grand exit, not entrance, our sauce is beautifully, beautifully working together. I have a little bit of cornstarch and some cold water that we are gonna be adding to it just to thicken it up and make it a nice napant consistency. And what is napant? Napant means that the spoon, the sauce should actually nap the back of a spoon for the perfect consistency. So we're gonna let that cook down a little bit. We're gonna let that heat up. Our sauce is working lovely. We have our beautiful fillets over here. I'm gonna start continuing to fillet this. Guys, we're gonna be right back. I don't want you to leave that seat. We got a couple of minutes, so we'll be right back. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. 
But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Hi, and welcome back to Cooking with George. We have our beautiful tile fish fillets, which we are gonna season with salt and pepper. Now our mango sauce is finished. We have a nice consistency over there. Now you notice I seasoned both sides of the fish. You're gonna eat both sides, so you're gonna season both sides. That usually is the rule of thumb. Now that's what we're looking for. We're looking for some nice color on one side. Just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip that fish over and we're gonna flip it onto a cookie tray or whatever you have, uh, a sheet pan. And we're gonna put this crust on it. And this crust, I'm gonna show you an easy way how to, how to prepare it. I have an oven on right now. It's set about 420 degrees. So these fillets are about an inch thick. They're not gonna take too long. We're looking at about three minutes on one side just for color, and then another five minutes in the oven. So now we have our crust, which we're gonna just lay on our clean cutting board, like that. And with a spatula, you just gotta flatten it out. Now you saw how much butter went in that crust. That, this crust is gonna be enough for about 20 pieces of fish. So you don't have to use that much. So right now we're just gonna flatten this out like this. Just like that with your spatula, you're gonna flatten it out. This is a good way to get your kids involved too. Billy, really come here, help us cook. And you get them, you have them do something fun. It'll be a good, it's a good look. And then you just cut it in segments. And every segment is gonna go on the top of a piece of fish. And then the fish is gonna get finished in the oven. And that is just a glorious thing. We have our nice, beautiful, beautiful fillets. Something really, really nice about tile fish, it's actually a seasonal fish. You get it between the months of probably May and June all the way through October and in the winter they kind of die off a little bit, you don't see them. Uh, but in those months we also have other things to fish for, tuna, which Cousin George is great at, brings us a ton of tuna. And uh, sea, black sea bass is one of, my, one of my personal favorites. We try to go out there as much as we can. See, now notice that the fish is nice and dense. Now, if you notice, we never rinsed off the fish. You don't want to wash, you don't want, this fish has never been touched by fresh water, which is a beautiful thing because protein has natural sugar and sugar absorbs water. And that's why you don't want to, you never want to rinse it off. And you, if you do rinse it off, what you want to do is dry it off as soon as you do. So we started the cooking and we're gonna finish it in the oven. We're gonna grab a couple plates. But first we're gonna put our crust on. That looks nice. Just like that. And that butter is gonna melt and that panko is gonna get nice and crisp. It's gonna get nice and crisp. It's gonna flow right into the, right into the protein. It's gonna be beautiful. And there we go. Now remember what I was telling you about having a napant consistency. The French like to use the term napant where you take the sauce and you nap the back of a spoon and you see how that sauce is just kind of oozing over. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for that consistency whenever you're making a sauce. The French like to use napant. I call it perfect, but the French have their own terms. Again, you run your finger through the back of the spoon and that sauce is just oozing over that line that you just performed. So. We're gonna get rid of this. We have our sauce ready. We have our rice ready. Our fish is gonna take five or six more minutes. We'll be back in a second, guys. We're gonna get our rice and our plates. And we'll plate it and go take, check it out. Oh, our rice looks great. That looks perfect. We'll be right back. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay, 
But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. And now we're back. We're about to plate our, uh, our beautiful tile fish. First, what we're going to do, we have our nice sticky rice over here. Just perfect. That's what we're looking for. And what you want to do is just put it in a ramekin and just make it look sharp. You know, do this for your wife. She's going to love it. You went out of your way to do something special for her. Here we go. And that's perfect. We're going to set that aside. Our tile fish is... looking perfect. Now look, we got that beautiful color from the, the, the walnuts actually caramelized and turned a little dark. That's what we're looking for. We're going to place that right on top. Oh, we'll grab another piece. We have plenty to work with. There we go. And now our sauce, which is as good as a deposit in the bank. It's so delicious. Right around the plate. That spicy mango nectar looks perfect. My taste tester is about to get really, really spoiled. I don't even think she knows what she's up against right now. This looks great. And here we have it. We have our white sticky rice. We have our golden tile fish filet, which is encrusted in our walnuts and other spices and herbs and our mango sauce. There you have it. We're going to meet these two plates in the dining room, preferably over a glass of wine with my taste tester. We'll see you back in a second. We'll be right back. Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. Hi, and welcome to my favorite part of the show, the taste testing portion. I have a dear friend of mine who I've known for quite some time now, Christina Santos. It's great to have you on the show. I know you just saw the cooking of uh, this beautiful tile fish that's walnut encrusted in the white rice. I'm glad you actually came out. And, uh, and, Thank uh, you for inviting me. Oh, pleasure's all mine. Look, right now we're going to be enjoying this beautiful piece of fish. We have a nice mango sauce that's going to be sweet but a little bit spicy. We have uh, the white rice and also the tile fish that's been walnut encrusted. Why don't we dig in? Sounds good. Let's do it. Now, it's a very simple dish. The sauce takes a little bit of time, but... I've never met anybody who hasn't liked it. And I know you're not a fish eater. Oh, and I'm gonna try, not, I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to turn that on you. So let's see what happens. It's not very salty. It's actually really, really sweet and subtle. So. All right, I'm going for that second bite. So it definitely tastes it. awesome. And definitely not a fish eater. Mm. Do you normally have this on the menu? Like, like I said, this, this is a seasonal fish. Well, like I said, it's a seasonal fish. So from May to November, we have it almost all the time. Uh, it's very easy to find. I mean, being that it's found in the depths from eight to 1200 feet, even so it's fished for a lot. But uh, I'm very, very much enjoying this. I'm enjoying your company. Definitely I, has my vote. Oh, excellent work. So look, we're gonna see you guys next time you're watching Cooking with George. Thank you very much.